All right, welcome back. Another week, another Good Vibe show. Another week with Debbie Cox DeNova, who is right here, right now. Debbie, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. We're going to talk about longevity. Yes, we are. Is that a secret? There are said some secrets. Because secrets to longevity. Yes, yes. I want to deep dive the research around living longer. The research that comes from what we call the blue zones. So there's mm -hmm. areas all over the world where there are a higher concentration of centenarians living, meaning people who live over the age of 100. But not just people who live over the age of 100, but who live well good years past mm -hmm. the age of 100. So this research largely comes from Dan, Bu uh, Dan Buettner, who wrote a book called Blue Zones. Um, mm -hmm. And it's called The Blue Zones, Lessons for Living Longer from the People Who've Lived the Longest. And also mm -hmm. da uh, Dave Sinclair, who wrote Lifespan, The Revolutionary Science of Why We Age and Why We Don't Have To. Right, so we're talking like 100 or 120? Good. Up to 120 and beyond sometimes. Really? Yeah. The, the body. I'm all in. Right? The, yeah. the, the human body was designed, they say, to live to 90 years old. And on average, we're living to about 78. So we're living 12 good years on the mm. table. And so these researchers wanted to know what is it about these specific communities that are having more people live longer. Mm -hmm. um, and so they did the research and basically there are some commonalities that keep on coming up over and over again that we can apply in our own lives mm -hmm. so that we can increase our chances of living longer. Can I ask a little secret on what some of those things are? Yes, you can. All right, good. <laughs> so one of the first things is that in these communities, there are a lot of people moving naturally. I'm not talking about belonging to a gym mm -hmm. or necessarily lifting weights, although that is the case in some of these communities. Um, but for example, in um, Sardinia, which is 150 miles off of the coast of, of Italy, mm -hmm. uh, there is a large community of centenarians that are sheep herders. So throughout the day, they're walking, they're moving their body, they're, they're herding sheep. You see a lot of people, and it's common over the mm -hmm. age of 100, riding their bicycle to work, um, just staying active in the community. On average, about uh, moving the body about every 25 minutes. So not mm. a lot of sedentary living in these communities. Moving naturally in a moderate way. Um, Dave Sinclair says that over and over again, when they do the research on mammals to see about the you know two things that, that have people living longer, there is, first of all, that there's short stints of huffing and puffing, so mm -hmm. uh, running, right? So basically you're tricking the, the system into believing that you are being chased by a tiger, right? And so mm -hmm. what happens is that it speeds up the, the cellular rejuvenation process. Mm -hmm. So you're activating something called sirtuins in the body. Um, and in that process, you're basically uh, informing the body that it, it, it needs to hurry up and recover and get stronger for the future. Um, and then the other thing is um, having stints, short stints of time where you are not eating a whole lot. So what they found, a commonality amongst uh, the blue zones, is that the people there, they eat moderately and they eat mostly plant-based, about 95% plant-based. So they're fasting? Some of them are fasting, and we do know that there's some great research now on intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. although I will caution uh, women at home that uh, the research is done on men mostly because we're so hormonally different, but it's mm. because we're so hormon hormonally different that we have to think about as women whether or not this research applies to women because it can throw off menstrual cycles and it mm. can be um, for some women, I do intermittent fasting, but for some mm. women it can be a negative, have a negative impact. But in general, what they found is that intermittent fasting, meaning you know, uh, fasting a minimum of 16 hours per day. So you're basically taking your, your, your uh, bringing your eating into one window of time, eight hours or less in the mm -hmm. day, okay? Same amount of calories, but you're just putting it in a smaller window yeah. of time. So when you're, when you're fasting for 16 hours, at the, at the 16th hour, you have benefits of cellular autophagy, so your, cell, your cellular um, recycling system increases, mm -hmm. mental acuity increases, and what research has shown is that for every hour after the 16th hour, those two benefits specifically increase. It's like rewinding time in the body. You're, uh, you are recycling the, the cells faster. The zombie cells mm -hmm. that are in your body are cleaned up faster and you, you become mentally sharper. 
Um, they have done studies to show that in mammals, over a great period of time, if they are left to starvation, yes, it does increase their longevity, but it can also increase moodiness and you know just basically the feeling of hanger. So, <laughs> so, so you're fasting like two thirds of the. Time. Yeah. Well, yeah. Twenty four hour clock. Right. But so but you don't have to do it in extreme ways. Mm -hmm. If you just give yourself a, a um, periodically a chance to just be hungry, it basically allows the body to start uh, using some of that energy that would typically go toward digestion, toward mm -hmm. healing processes in the body, and it also just increases the cellular rejuvenation. So process. your rerouting what goes to digestion mm -hmm. and it helps repair the body. Correct, yes, because through the aging process, your cells start to break down and then it pulls proteins from other areas and proteins are doing really important jobs in the body. So um, so it basically allows that energy to be used um, well. You obviously don't want to take it to an extreme. Mm -hmm. You don't want to uh, you know, bring yourself to malnutrition. Well, how about if but... I start with eight hours of fasting? Eight hours? Well, I don't know that it could be considered intermittent fasting okay. at eight hours, <laughs> but the good news about intermittent yeah. fasting is that the time that you're sleeping does count, right? Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's not as hard as people would think that it is. It's, you know, whatever eight hour window of time would work for you, but you don't even have to do intermittent fasting to get benefits. Just periodically, mm -hmm. a couple times a week, maybe skip a meal and, and create hunger within the body. Run every, every now and then just to, cre to create that huff and puff um, effect. I'm going to show you how much I was paying attention. Yes. Sirtuins. Sirtuins. What is a sirtuin? Yeah, so sirtuins are a very important enzyme in the body that's re it's responsible for things like DNA repair and protection and, and expression, um, food processing, and it's been connected to longevity. So mm -hmm. over time with age, the sirtuins start to become distracted by other processes in the body, which can cause the DNA to unravel, cause the cellular processes to break down without proper repair. Okay. So you were mentioning sheep herders. Yes. That live long. Now to me, a sheep herder may be a very necessary job role, mm -hmm. but it is probably a stress-free job role. They're out there, mm -hmm. they're with harmony, they're going through things, there's not a whole lot of people firing negative things yeah. at them. Yes. Stress is probably if you get rid of a lot of stress, you probably increase your life. And that was definitely one of the commonalities in the Blue Zones, is that these communities had specific ways to downshift or to de-stress in the day. Um, the Blue Zone in the United States, Loma Linda, California, where there are a higher concentration of seven-day Adventists, they will actually take a 24-hour period where they will do nothing except focus on family and friends and faith. So family, mm -hmm. friends, and faith for 24 hours, that's their de-stress. Some people de-stressed with meditation, some people with um, you know, a happy hour in mm -hmm. Sardinia, they would actually drink wine, and it was actually a little bit of alcohol across the blue zones was very common, but it was most often with friends, and on average it was about a three, three quarters of a glass of wine for women and two glasses for men, and again, with that social um, you know, atmosphere in a low stress environment. I also noticed yesterday, the power went out for about an hour and a half in Homa. Yes. Just on one block. Mm -hmm. And everybody who was at a local restaurant it was dark in there. Of course, the air condition was out. Mm -hmm. They couldn't serve food. They were serving spirits, of course. But everybody got at the bar, and it was the most jovial time. Everybody sitting there talking in the dark mm -hmm. and just communicating. Yeah. After power was lost. Yes. Sometimes the most simple things happen at the most simple time. Yes, and it's about that people and that bonding. So that's another commonality is the, is the community, a strong sense of community across the board, across all blue zones, when people had strong social bonds that were healthy, they lived longer. And we already know that through research in the United States, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we know that in these communities, instead of retiring uh, you know, the older people, people as they aged became more, more revered. They just switched jobs, a lot of them, mm -hmm. but they continued to work all throughout life. Um, and they had a strong sense of purpose. So in uh, Okinawa, they called it ikigai, your, your sense of purpose. And it could be as simple as waking up in the morning and actually fishing for your community mm -hmm. or spending time with your family. But there was a strong sense of purpose and a connection to people. We know that if you have three best friends mm -hmm. who smoke tobacco, you're 160% 
more likely to smoke yourself. This is the same thing with depression and attitudes and really? moods. We're very contagious as people. So it also holds true when you have a healthy community that you're connected to every day. It'll mm -hmm. actually um, you, you know, increase brain health. It'll con increase general sense of well-being, um, you know, overall a sense of health and happiness. Mm -hmm. uh, strong community is probably one of the most important things when it comes to longevity and specifically living longer but well. Um, so you, you have to feel like you fit in. You have to feel like you fit yeah. in, like you're seen, like you are safe to be yourself mm -hmm. and that people get you. Um, we already know from something called the Framingham study that it, that people, that loneliness and um, a sense of isolation actually kills people. Mm -hmm. And so the opposite is true too. When we have those co connections and those bonds, we actually end up, it, it's a protective, mm -hmm. um, you know, it provides protection for us, not only on a physical level, but mentally as well. But a secret. In my business, when I'm dealing with public all day long, mm -hmm. sometimes at night, the lone time is really good for me. Yes, and that's yeah. part, of, part of being either an extrovert, extrovert or an introvert, right? So mm -hmm. as an introvert, I too like to be alone in order to recharge the battery. So important to know what helps you to lower your stress because mm -hmm. that is a, an extremely important part of longevity. Another very interesting thing was faith. Across the board, and it didn't matter what kind of faith, people in the blue zones had a sense of faith community. So if you go to, uh, if you join together in faith community four times per month at least, and you're active, mm -hmm. you actually on average can live, um, let's see, four to 14 years really? longer. Yeah, and they don't know why. They don't know if it's a sense of community or you know if it's the the, the lower stress because you're, you're kind of putting your... Mm -hmm. your um, well, maybe your faith, you feel like you're, when you go, you have a place to go and maybe that eases you from the afterlife. Could be, it could be. Who knows? Absolutely, yeah, hmm. yeah. That's very interesting. Uh -huh. So how do you store all this? What do you You're mean? like a walking memory bank on all this stuff. That's pretty good. You read a lot, don't you? I do read a lot, yes. I love it. Well, I guess that's where you got me beat. <laughs> I like YouTube and Netflix and all that kind of stuff. But, Debbie, good seeing you again. You Great too. topic. And uh, hopefully we'll be on this desk when we're 120 yes. doing good vibes. Let's shoot for it. All yeah. right. All right. There you go. Debbie Cox, the Nova. We'll see her again next week for another great episode. Longevity. Fast for. 16 hours, it's not gonna happen with me. But I'll try eight, then I'll try 10, 12. I'll build to it. All right, we'll see you next week.